everybody, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. Today's video is an exciting one because today I wanted to share with you some of the new Japanese novels being published in English for the first time in 2021. I have a few novels, some of them I myself really want to read, some of them are not exactly my cup of tea, but maybe some of you will be interested in them, so I decided to include them on the list as well. So, we will start with the book that actually very much interests me. It is going to be released in 25 days, like 25 days from the moment I'm filming this video, and today is the 7th of February. And the book is called Touring the Land of the Dead by Maki Kashimada. This is a very short book, just 144 pages, and it includes two stories. But these stories are said to be very haunting. Well, you could guess from the title of the book, Touring the Land of the Dead. The first story has to do with a married couple. The husband of the couple, he was forced out of job, and since then the family have, has been surviving only on the single income of the woman, who sometimes picks up different part-time jobs. So they're struggling. However, the wife, she is used to this life of struggle. She had to endure a lot of difficulties as a child, that's why this current situation she kind of, she, she's used to this. And then one day she reads an advertisement in, the, in a newspaper, an advertisement about a special spa place, and she understands that this is the place where her grandfather took her mom as her mom was a child. And so it's like, a, it's this place is somehow connected to her family's history. And she decides to invite her husband just for like a nice evening together to this spa. Not without considering like the money, she just like, okay, I will pay it, we will just go and have a good evening together. And eventually, when they go there together, they start discussing like her childhood and her family secrets and her family history. So their time there triggers hard, but ultimately redemptive memories relating to the complicated history of her family. The overnight trip becomes a voyage into the netherworld, a journey to the doors of death and back to life. Sounds so good. <laughs> sounds so good. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm reading this. I'm reading this. It's going to be published. I'm going to read it. And then there is a second story. second story also sounds very interesting, and I feel like I really have to read it, because it is said that the story is somehow based, modeled, it's said that it's modeled on classical novel The Makioka Sisters. So, I feel like maybe first I read this short story and then I read The Makioka Sisters, because Makioka Sisters, they kind of a little bit intimidate me, it's a little bit of a chunkier novel, like 500 something pages. So I've been a little bit intimidated by Makioka Sisters, but I really want to read them. So I did, okay, I will first read this short story and then inspired by this short story. I will read the Makioka sisters. The story is about four unmarried young Japanese girls living alone in a historical close-knit neighborhood somewhere in Tokyo. Yeah, so it portrays in touching and lyrical fashion lives of these four girls. And I'm like, okay, yes, it sounds like, a, like something I would like to read. <laughs> so yeah, this is the first book that I personally really want to read. It is the Touring the Land of the Dead. Next book, I honestly don't know what is going on with its publication, because it is said that officially, like on Goodreads, it says that the book is to be published on March the 2nd of 2021. But, but, on Book Depository, it is already published. <laughs> like, you can already buy it. So I don't know what's the deal with that, but officially this book is supposed to be published all somewhere in March 2021, and it is the An I Novel by Minae Mizumura. Minae Mizu Mizumura was brought up in America, she spent 20 years of her life in America, however eventually she realizes that like this American culture, English language, is not something she likes. <laughs> is not something that she is like ready to, I don't know, accept. She apparently understood that this is not for her and she wants to go back to her roots. She wants to go back to Japan and become a writer in Japanese language in Japan. And so this is an eye novel, since it's an eye novel, like this Japanese genre of an eye novel, it is semi 
autobiographical as well so it's based on on the author's own life but it's still semi-autobiographical <laughs> and so in this book the main protagonist receives a call from her older sister and her older sister reminded her that it has this is like this day is an anniversary for their family 20 years since they moved to new york and after this phone call she spends like the whole evening in solitude contempl contemplating on their life in america thinking about their experiences in america and she also was thinking about how to break the news to her family how to break the fact that she wants to go back to japan the novel was initially in japanese published in 1995 and it broke up with old traditions of like japanese eye novel because first of all it was published in like l horizontal lines like in you know european style of reading when like japanese books are published vertically so you read vertically the book is also considered to be a meditation on becoming a writer but also on finding your identity and it's also said that above all the novel considers what it means to write in the era of the hegemony of english and what it means to be a writer of Japanese in particular. For a long time this novel apparently was considered to be untranslatable into English and so finally Juliet Winters Carpenter masterfully rendered the novel. So yes, I'm also excited to try this novel out and to see all the contemplations and to see all the thoughts of the author on the realities of being a writer in Japan, in Japanese. So that's exciting. That's another novel which I really want to read. Next novel is also one that I am very curious about and the author whom I am very curious about. I also want to read her other book that was published last year. I'm talking about Meiko Kawakami. So last year she published the book Breasts and Eggs. Really want to read that. Like I still haven't gotten to it. It's a little bit pricey. I'm like mm, one day maybe there will be a discount. One day. <laughs> there haven't, there hasn't been a discount yet so I'm still waiting. So <laughs> one day I want to get to that book. But then this year she's also publishing a new novel. Her new novel is called Heaven. And it sounds just so incredibly important and also incredibly heartbreaking. <laughs> so I, I feel like I'm going, going to, it's going to be a very emotional experience of reading this novel. The novel deals with bullying. So it told from the perspective of a 14-year-old narrator, a boy who is being bullied by his classmates for his lazy eye. He finds a friend in his one classmate, a girl, who is also experiencing the same bullying also from the same classmates for a, for a different reason, but she is also being bullied. And so these two kids for, uh, create a bond and they, be, they start supporting each other. And so the book is about bullying and causes of bullying and how it affects human life afterwards. And yes, it's described that these raw and realistic portrayals of bullying are counterbalanced by textured exposition of the philosophical and religious debates concerning violence to which the weak are subjected. Kawakami's simple yet profound new work stands as a dazzling testament to her literary talent. There can be little doubt that it has cemented her reputation as one of the most important young authors working to expand the boundaries of contemporary Japanese literature. This novel also sounds very exciting. The cover is so beautiful. The cover looks very beautiful. So yeah, I'm looking forward to finally read something by Meiko Kawakami because both of her works sound extremely interesting. One more very interesting novel, which I'm just like, hmm, sounds really great. So the novel is called The Woman in a Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura. And this novel tells the story of control and paranoia because it narrates a very unhealthy relationship between two women whom the reader only knows as the woman in the purple skirt and the woman in the orange, orange cardigan. These are the two only references that the reader knows the women by. So purple skirt, orange cardigan. And I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. So apparently uh, our woman in the purple skirt, she loses her job and she lives in a very old dilapidated apartment. Eventually, and she has this ritual of eating a cream bun every day in a park, just something she does every day. And then 
one day she meets this woman in an orange cardigan who helps her to get job in a hotel and later on she continues to manipulate her through the shadows so this is like the premise of the book Manip manipulation control unhealthy relationship sounds very haunting and something like sounds psychological Natsuko, Natsuko Imamura, she is a prize-winning author so, so she's quite a well-known author in Japan so I'm excited to try her book out and to see, like, to get my own experience with this author that sounds very, very good, so very interesting also in this video we will not be talking about Kazuo Ishiguro's book because obviously it's coming, it's being published in 2021 but first of all I have already talked about this book in my um, 2020 anticipated releases and second of all, I don't know, I might be like wrong or I don't know, prejudiced but I personally, I cannot consider Kazuo Ishiguro a Japanese writer like he grew up in Great Britain he writes books in English, not in Japanese so I don't know if I like con I don't know if I'm like consider him Japanese writer. I've always thought about him as a British writer. He writes book like not about Japan. Like for example, his um, Never Let Me Go. It's not about like Japan. It's more about something European. So I don't know. I, I Kazuo Ishiguro. Well, obviously he, he comes from like Japanese background. I don't know. I can I. It's just me, but I just personally, because he also writes in English, he's not writing in Japanese, so I consider him a British writer. It's not like, not, not, it's, I don't think that it's, it's really important. He obviously, obviously is a phenomenal great writer. I'm just want, I just wanted to explain myself, like why I'm not including him on the in this video. First of all, I already talked about his book, and I really want to read that. And second of all, I kind of more consider him to be a British author, to be honest. Just in my head. But again, it's not really important. He really is a great writer, so yeah. <laughs> it's not like anything. So yeah, Kazuo Ishiguro talked about him in a different video. One more book that is being published is by is by Haruki Murakami, so first person singular. Also, I will not be talking about this book because again, I talked about this book already in 2020 2021 releases that I'm looking forward to, so you can check that book out in that video if you're interested. But yes, Haruki Murakami is also coming out with a new book. One more book is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tsujimura. This book sounds weird. <laughs> like it sounds, like the description sounds something like strange so I don't know if I'm like I am I am interested but at the same time I'm like we will see <laughs> we will see because at the same time like some parts of the description do not sound like my cup of tea for example it is described as being a book about loneliness and what it takes to overcome it so this description sounds great to me but then keep on listening <laughs> because the book follows lives of a few teenagers like disconnected teenagers living in the modern tokyo and they get transferred like it's sl slightly a magical realism book or like sl it takes some slight fantasy elements so they can get transferred into this magic land the castle that they find themselves in is a magnificent place incredibly beautiful but ultimately it's a puzzle that they have to solve so freeing themselves means that they will be granted a wish but if they fail to free themselves mean that they're going to die like really die and I'm like no why no why is that like that <laughs> Why do they have to die? And later on, like it says, that it's actually a heartwarming story. And I'm like, children are about to die. How can it be a heartwarming story? Like, excuse me. <laughs> so yeah, this is something like that sounds a little bit strange to me. And I don't want any children to die. So I, I don't know if like everything except for the part of the children being threatened by death. I find very interesting. So I think I will give this book a read. But just the fact that like the stakes are so high. I don't know. And also like fantasy isn't really my genre. I don't get along with fantasy. 
but it's not really fantasy. It just has like a small fantasy element of them being transported into this magic land and this magic castle. So we will see. But this book, I'm, I'm conf not confused. I'm in two minds about this book. <laughs> we will see if I'm going to read it or not. I really want to read this one. Sounds interesting. And it also sounds like something I have never tried before. So it's going to be an experiment for me. I want to experiment with my reading. And so the book is called Terminal Boredom by Izumi Suzuki. Izumi Suzuki is, again, quite a well-known Japanese writer. She is a science fiction writer. And this book is a collection of her short stories, which are described as being punk and venomous. And they are going to appeal to the fans of Margaret Atwood and fans of Black Mirror. It's going to be an experiment. We will see. I just see, like, I just read that this author is well known and quite beloved in Japan. And I'm like, okay, I will give it a try. We will see if I'm, I'm going to like it, if it's going to be for me. And then one book, which <laughs> I honestly like, it kind of sounds something interesting and something strange, but at the same time, also. It does sound like not a book for me, so we will see if I will end up reading it. Because it's called Bullet Train by Kataro Isaka. And it became a bestseller in Japan. It is a train full of killers and a suitcase of money. <laughs> so among this about among the characters of the book, we have so-called the unluckiest assassin in the world. <laughs> there is also a psychopath and there is a father who is determined uh, to revenge his child to somebody for something. It's not said yet. So there will be like I guess a cast of bizarre characters, like weird characters, but it does sound interesting like the unluckiest assassin in the world. <laughs> like sounds great. <laughs> but again it sounds more like a thriller, maybe. Some, not a detective, but maybe something like a thriller. And it's not like a, my cup of tea again. So I don't know if I will read it. But if the unluckiest assassin in the world, a father bent on revenge and a psychopath on one train and also a big suitcase of money. If this combination in one bullet train sounds interesting to you and the fact that the book became a bestseller in Japan impresses you <laughs> so maybe you would be interested to give this book a try I am again I am in two minds about this book yet so we will see but it became a bestseller so it, it must be something at least gripping maybe not like a literary <laughs> exactly literary masterpiece but it must be at least something gripping like a fast interesting read since it appeared since it appealed to such a wide audience. So, maybe for some like just enjoyable, fast, quick, fun, bizarre read, maybe this book will, would do. So, we will see. Yeah, I'm thinking about this book. <laughs> So there you have it guys, just a few of Japanese novels being published in English for the first time in 2021. Let me know in the comments which one of these sounded the most interesting to you. As for me, like quite a few of them I really want to read, like I said, I really want to meet Meiko Kawakami, I really want to read the first book, like Threading Through the World of the Dead. I want to read The Heaven and The Woman in the Purple Skirt, like all of these books sound very interesting. So let me know which one is on your top list of priorities and thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was interesting i hope you're also having a very good day and enjoying your current read thank you so much for watching have a good day and i will see you soon in the next videos thank you very much bye